Good morning and welcome to Around the Way. I'm Savannah J on Palmetto Life. And I'm excited because we're in Somerville, South Carolina. We are visiting with Andrea. Now, Andrea, I want to make sure I get the enunciation right with your middle name or your former name. Yeah, it's Cayetano. Cayetano Jefferson. Yes, ma'am. And that name means a lot to you. It does. Yes, tell me why. My, I hyphen my last name because of my father. I am a first generation American. Um, my dad's from Livingston, Guatemala. So I'm half Guatemalan, half Galagichi. Okay then. <laughs> and you also are a uh, sixth generation? Yes. Sixth okay. generation sweet grass basket sore. Right. Mm -hmm. And you have a seventh generation about? My daughter, Chelsea. Chelsea. So you've been doing uh, basket sewing how long? It's been over 35 years now. 35 years. You yeah. started and you was like, ooh. <laughs> I started when I was about six years old. I started working on the market, downtown city market, when I was about eight. So I've been sewing baskets literally since I was eight years old. You've always been impressed with it? I was. I wanted to do this so bad. Um, my mom and my aunt, all of my aunts would get together like after work or on the weekends and they would sew and they just made these beautiful baskets and when everybody else was running and playing down the dirt road, I did not. I was sitting down on the floor by their feet, picking up the grasses and trying to figure out how to do it. They did tell you the history of the basket. Mm -hmm. what, what is the history of the basket? So Sweetgrass Basket weaving, the artistry of Sweetgrass Basket sewing is um, one of the oldest African art forms still continued in the United States today. Um, and we gather all the materials ourselves. It, it all grows along the Galagichi Corridor from Jacksonville, North Carolina, down to Jacksonville, Florida. And me, my husband, and my kids, we go out and we gather all the materials ourselves. Mm -hmm. Nothing is bought in the stores, Come on. Okay. even the tools that we use. The only thing that I can buy is a pair of scissors. Wow. I heard you, uh, you collaborated with a Grammy Award winner, <laughs> John Legend, yes. singer, songwriter, and all those good things. Mm -hmm. So tell me about that. So I am a, I have an Etsy shop, so I sell most of my baskets on Etsy. And um, I was chosen um, from a group of other makers and, with, for John Legend, and um, we did a celebrity, it was called a Creator Collab. And we worked together to work out some designs, and he chose three different baskets of mine um, to be in his collection. Wow. So what, where's the collection at now? Sold. <laughs> so did you do something with Minnesota or something like that? I did. Um, in October, me and my daughter Chelsea, we went to Minnesota. Um, I had a exhibit. It, and the exhibit was, it was awesome. Number Come one. on, tell me about it. Tell me about it. <laughs> it was the first, it was at the Northern Clay Center in Minnesota, Minneapolis, Minnesota. In, they work with clay, but without anyone even thinking about it, clay and basket weaving is so kind of similar because we have to use, we use our hands to, to shape our baskets. So um, there's another, another maker, um, ceramic artist, uh, Ashlyn Pope. We had a exhibit together and we did some outreach work there so I got to meet some indigenous people who came and took a workshop with me and gifted me some of their local sweet grass um, to bring home and that was like that was the highlight of my whole trip. I mean that's a blessing. It was. So to just to experience that right mm -hmm. to combine the clay making with the basket yeah. sewing wow how did you know that that was going to be something common with that? I didn't you it didn't. was the vision of Chosani, she was the curator for the exhibit, um, Chosani Dean, and she actually helped me to get my first exhibit, which was at Anderson University at South Carolina. Yeah, so that she was in charge. I had my first solo exhibit in, at Anderson University, and then she said that she wanted me to come out there to meet the Native people and introduce what our work is to the people there. And it, was a great reception. We are so connected. Yes. We are so connected. Do you do any basket weaving classes here? I do. I am here at the Public Works Art Center. I have a studio here and I offer classes once a month, at least once a month here. Okay. Here in Somerville. Here in can Somerville. Can you give us the address here? It's 135 West Richardson 
Avenue. Okay, then. And um, you got something you're going to show me? Yes, I'm going to show you a little, show maybe little I, bit maybe, of how maybe we I get can learn a little, Maybe I can learn a little something. <laughs> Let me see. Okay, so I have a bottom here that I'm going to use to make a rice fanner, but I'm just getting started. What is it called? I'm going to make a rice fanner, a large um, basket, larger than this one back here. Okay. But this Why do you is, call it a rice fanner? It um, is actually... One of the reasons why our ancestors were brought here mm -hmm. for the knowledge of the rice fanning basket or the winnowing basket. This basket was used to, is still used to separate the rice from the shaft. So you oh, shake, shake it, it and then the shaft would fly and you'd have the rice. Ah. So most the original rice fanners were made of all bulrush. We use, most the original sweetgrass baskets were made of all bulrush. They were not sweetgrass baskets. Bulrush. What's the difference between bulrush and... So here, bulrush is what you see in the marsh. This is bulrush. It's thicker. Sweet grass is a lighter, softer grass, a more pliable. We also use longleaf pine needles. But what I'm using right here is palm. And this palm is already stripped down into little strips. So it's our state tree, the palmetto tree. So I strip this down. And what I'm using is my tool. It's called a nail bone. And I've had this for 25 years. How many years? 25. Was this gifted to you by your My mom made oh, this for man. me. And this is my favorite. I have others that I use. But this is my go-to that I use just about every day. And it's literally, we call it sewing because it's stitch for stitch. It's not a machine or anything. We go stitch for stitch and you pull out that nail bone and you put it in the next one and you add the grasses in as you go. So it's by feel. Andrea, <laughs> we thank you. We thank You're you so, so much. Welcome. Yes, we thank you. I thank you for yes. coming. Well, thank you for having me. Thank yeah. you so much. You're blessed, young lady. Thank uh, you. I'm Savannah J. I'll see you later around the way.